her name is Tamara. And just before you ask your question, maybe, can you just tell us about who Tamara is? Okay, well, I'm a bit of a loser. I study very, very hard because <laughs> I really want to get accepted into medical school. And also, I part-time work at the Hogshead. It's really, really fun to do, and I love all the people that I meet there. Shout out to my managers and my peeps there. And yeah, it teaches me a lot of people skills, and I'm really, really enjoying it. I will just say that you're definitely not a loser, because we do want to teach young, young people to start owning up and taking responsibility from a very young age. So, big ups for that, man. Big ups. What is your question to our teacher? Um, how do you factorize a cubic expression which cannot be factorized using grouping? All right, let's go right back to studio. Okay, guys, how do we factorize a cubic expression which cannot be factorized by using grouping? Now, this is a brilliant question, and you need to know this from a trick. Okay, when, they do, when you girls do calculus in the trick, you're going to need to know how to factorize a cubic expression, and especially not by using grouping. You see, if you have a look at an example quickly, have a look at this one. If I said to you, solve for x, this is a cubic equation. In fact, it's a cubic graph. A cubic graph looks something like this. Let me show you, very interesting. It goes like that, wow, you see. Um, and it's something new. And what you're really doing is you're finding the x-intercepts of the cubic graph, but don't worry about that. The main thing is to use the factor theorem, which I'm gonna show you, to solve a cubic equation. Okay, now watch this. Firstly, grouping is not gonna work because if you try and take out an x squared here and you're left with x minus one, and say you took out negative four and you're left with x minus three, as you did in grade 10, notice this is not going to work. It's actually a two there, but this is not gonna work because the brackets aren't the same. So we need another technique which we are going to do over here. Okay, so let me erase this and let me tell you how to approach this now. Okay, here we go. What I would suggest you do is here's a cubic equation and the cubic equation is like a girl looking for a husband. Amanda's looking for a husband, she's gonna, she's gonna test the guy. He's gonna have to meet certain requirements, maybe fill out a form, hey? You know, okay, what, what, what is the certain thing? Maybe he must have a lot of money, maybe. maybe. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> maybe he's gotta be good looking, maybe not too good looking, you see, or whatever, you don't know. Um, you know, let's see, we can play it by ear as we go along. Okay, goals. Now, what the cubic equation does is you write down the factors of 12. Things that would be a factor in a life. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12 all go into 12, and you go plus and minus. Okay, all right. And what we now do is we test them. Okay, so the cubic equation says, I'm going to test negative 1. Okay, now, what are we going to do? This negative one's gonna go through a test. Amanda's gonna date this guy and he's, he's, he's gonna take him out and check is he suitable for marriage, okay? You girls, you're never gonna choose a guy, any guy. Don't just go up to any guy and say, marry me, okay? <laughs> you don't wanna do that. So let's test minus one. Let's substitute him into the equation. And it's negative one cubed minus negative one squared minus negative eight times negative one plus 12. And you'll notice that when you work it out fairly quickly here, it does not come to naught. He's not cool. Zero, cool, okay. He's not your hero or your zero, okay. Okay, so he doesn't work. So let's try, so it's not a solution, let's try one. Should we do that? Okay, now substitute in one, look at this. If you put in one, well that's one minus one minus eight plus 12 is not naught. So one and negative one, are not gonna be very good husbands to Amanda, okay. But she says, let's try x equals two. Okay, ha ha. Okay. In goes two there, wow, and we substitute him in, and then look at this, it comes to naught. What a pleasure, there's a zero there, she's in love, you're my hero. Remember Mariah Carey sang it? There's a zero. <laughs> when you look inside your notes, you don't have to be afraid of algebra. <laughs> hey, that's cool, hey. No one laughs anymore, it's terrible. <laughs> okay, all right. Now, x equals two is a, is a solution. Now, that means that x minus two, if you bring the two across, becomes a factor in your life. Do you agree if you marry a guy, it becomes a factor in your life? Okay, now, the why it's a factor, let me show you how beautiful this is. You know when you factorize the little um, expression like that, you got x minus two, x plus two is equal to naught. Remember that? Um, and then you got x equals two or x equals minus two. Remember that's a solution. Mm. Two squared minus four is naught, it's a solution. But if you take it across and you do that, it becomes a factor. 
vector like and it's the same with the cubic equation but the difference here is they're going to be three brackets okay now let me show you a brilliant Scalazzi way of doing this okay now you've got a factor now when you factor us from grade 10 days remember when you had a little linear and a quadratic an x minus two and then a little trinomial when you multiplied it out you got yourself a cubic equation but now watch this is how it works if you take the cubic when you do factorize it you have one of the brackets is x minus two then the trick is what we want to do is we want to get the first term now look at this x times what gives me the first term when you times that x times x squared is x cubed you see you could in fact say what is x cubed divided by x giving you the x squared x times x squared is x cubed now look at the last term the last term is 12 and you've got negative 2 here negative 2 multiplied by what gives me positive 12 it must be negative 6 negative 2 times negative 6 is positive 12 so you've got the first term and the last term you see that there mm. the problem is you've got an x squared and a negative six but you don't know what the number next to x is and i write there a missing number in terms of x okay yeah. now what is what is the way that is brilliant what i would suggest you now do is the following okay go and multiply it out okay i'm just going to erase all this stuff here and then we can make it nice and clean what i'm going to suggest you do once you've got this so all you do is you get your your little factor by testing the factors of 12 test them if you substitute them in and it works you get x minus 2 as a factor x squared minus 6 with m now times that out x times x is x cubed plus mx squared minus 6x negative 2x squared minus 2mx plus 12 you simply multiply it out and then all you've got to do is you put the x squared terms together and the x terms watch this it's brilliant it works like this every time now watch out i've got mx squared minus 2x squared i put the two together and make them blue then i've got the brown negative 6x minus 2mx i put them together as well okay then once i've done that my x squared term i'm making blue in the original do you see that there but through my multiplying out, I've got two terms that are blue here. Can you see that there? mx squared minus 2x squared. Now, if you think about it logically, what? If you, these, you can't have two x squared terms, you've got to have one. So we've got to find a value for m. I suspect that m is going to be one. Think about it, one minus two is negative one. Yeah. Don't worry about the brown terms, just focus on the blues. And what I want you to do when you get to this point is I want you to work with that okay and i want you to make them equal to each other so look here so all you do is you put the mx squared minus 2x squared equal to minus 1x squared and you simply drop the x squareds m minus 2 is minus 1 and m is negative 1 plus 2 is 1 and have a look there when you do that m is 1 x minus 2 x squared plus 1x minus 6. if you multiply this out watch this if you multiply this out it's beautiful x cubed um, watch this plus x squared uh, minus 6x minus 2x squared is negative 1x squared and you keep timesing out you get the original and the beautiful thing is once you've got this do you want to see what happens here um, girls you you factorize this x plus 3x minus 2 is normal you've got three brackets it's cubic x squared has got two brackets mm -hmm. x cubed's got three and you get your solutions look at that two two and negative three negative three would have worked as well okay do you see how that let's just do a quick further we've got two minutes and let's just do another one quickly i'm going to motor through this one quickly if you look at this one multiplied out and then create it there okay have you with me so far now what you then do is you can say okay fine i'm testing the factors of four and uh, let's try them okay all of this you can get in moby school we'll try x is two and it works okay two works then you do this x is two is a solution now watch this now that's a factor okay now watch this once you got your factor you go x times what gives me 2x cubed is 2x squared minus 2 times minus 2 is 4 so you've got your first and your last term your negative 1x squared is your blue term now all you've got to do is you've got to connect let me just take that back there you're going to connect this this is brilliant here watch this the x squared terms watch there negative 2x squared and mx squared i call this a little smiley face 
there it is, look at that. See the negative two, my those two multiplied by those two, there's the happy face, and then you connect them. mx squared minus four x squared is equal to the negative one. Drop the x squared, m is three. You see there? Okay, and then I'm going very quickly through this. Factorize as normal and you get your answers. Adman, just before you ask your question, can you just tell me about what your goals for yourself are? Well, my goal for the year at the moment is to get six distinctions or more at the end of the year. So, I've got to work quite hard. Um, but then after that, I'd like to go study computer science abroad, preferably. That's the dream. <laughs> and then, at the end, I'm hoping to specialize in computer forensics. Okay. Yeah, it's just always been an interest. Look, for someone at home who's like me, who's asking themselves, what is computer forensics? What, what is it, in, in just briefly? Well, I think for those of you who've watched CSI, um, it's very technical. You use all the data and stuff from phones, from laptops, computers to get that information and evidence to get criminal cases and that. Okay. Yeah. So you're that guy, that weird guy. Okay. All right, so what is your question to our teacher? My question is, how do I use the factor theorem to determine the roots of a cubic function? All right, Mr. Mark Phillips, let's help Armand out. How do we get the roots of a cubic equation? Excellent, guys. That's a wonderful question um, from some very good students. <laughs> um, and what it is is that you're looking for the x-intercepts of a graph. And what do we do, guys? You let the y be equal to naught. So let's have a look at an example quickly. Determine the roots. You're going to face this in calculus up to 15 marks in, a, in the matric final exam. 15 out of 150. So you've got to master this. Okay. So what we do is we say, look, okay, fine. We're going to let the y, and remember y is fx, so you put the graph equal to naught. And do you notice that 2 goes into all of those? So if you, if you divide throughout, um, or in fact we don't have to even worry about that, we can start off by saying, if, if you forgot that, what numbers go into 4? 1, 2, two and, and four. 4. They're the factors. In other words, this cubic equation is looking for a husband. Okay, girls, are we going to check him out? Let's see. Okay, well, there's your, your little potential husbands. Okay, haha. <laughs> and also, you know the cubic, you know, she's... She, she's got too much makeup on. She says, I, I, need, I need to go and clean my face a bit. So let's, let's make the cubic a bit simple. Okay, so divide everybody by two, and we've got a nice little cubic equation. Now let's start testing. Should we test? Come here, minus one. I want to see if you qualify to be my husband. Okay, haha. Let's check you out. Okay, minus one cubed, minus three times minus one. She's checking him out. And look at that. Voila. Oh, honey, love at first sight. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little bit negative, so we've got to watch him. But listen, when he marries, you know, when he marries um, Lati, what did, what is it called? Queen Latifa? Yeah. <laughs> or maybe Amanda. Let's use Amanda here. When he marries Amanda, look at this. He becomes, he was negative. Take him across. He's a positive factor in her life. Look at that, plus one. Oh, oh baby. Okay. okay, now, look at this. Now you've got x cubed. Now don't forget to put the x squared terms in. It's naught. Okay, if it's not there, it was, it was x cubed minus 3x minus 2. So we always put an x squared term in there, which is naught. Can you see that there? Let's go back a bit. Look at the equation. See there? There's no x squared term. So what you do, is you put the naught there, very important step. Oh, okay. okay, write the factor. Okay, x times what gives me x cubed is x squared. All right, now look at the last term. You've got plus one. One times what gives me negative two is negative two. One times negative two is negative two. So what do you know? You've now sorted out those terms you see okay now we need a missing middle term it always works like that now all we got to do is use the smiley face now how it works is connect one to x squared it always works like this and the x to mx squared always it always works like that now watch this so there's my little smiley face look at that see the smiley face amanda's mm -hmm. smiling she's got a good husband there okay <laughs> And then we'd say, okay, and then how does it work? M x squared plus one x squared is naught x squared. You're always connecting to the x squared. If it's not there, then it's got you write naught x squared. Naught x squared vanishes, but we need the naught. So then we've got m plus the one. Remember, there's a one there, imaginary one. So it's m plus one x is equal to naught. And m is 
negative one. It always works like that. You get your factor, and there you go, x squared and minus two, and you do that, okay? And then, once you've done it, you plug it in, factorize, and you get your answers. Okay, three brackets.